Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we've got some new information about the upcoming season, Season of Dawn. We got a couple things today from Bungie. One is the kind of cinematic story trailer that we got with regards to kind of who's going to be involved, what's happening with the story. So I'm going to break this one down for you guys. This launched on December 3rd. Also today, Bungie updated Bungie.net with the new season information for Season of Dawn on there. I will do that in a separate video, kind of breaking down the season pass, a little bit about the lore of what's going on, and kind of a couple breakdowns of pictures and exotics and things of that nature. And then tomorrow, um, or potentially today when you're watching this, on noon at noon central time, uh, so 10 a.m. Pacific, when Bungie does its live stream, there are rumors of some stuff that may be coming, but they're going to do the live stream of some game mode and all the stuff that is coming, playing maybe the new activity, showing off some artifact mods and all of that fun stuff, maybe explaining how power level is going to work. All of those things are still speculative until we see that stream. Most likely we'll get some more details then. And then the TWAB is on Thursday. We've got the podcast on Friday. It's going to be in the evening, so many of you guys can catch it. We've got a great guest coming, very ultra-knowledgeable guy about Destiny. Um, teasing Teddy, if you guys haven't seen him on Twitter before. Really, really smart guy, plays a lot of this game, so definitely has plenty of experience and has some thoughts about it. So, a lot of stuff happens this week, but we have this trailer. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to play it once for you guys. And then, what I'm going to do is kind of go back through, rewind it, stop it frame by frame, talk about stuff that I see in there. Kind of go through and break down a couple things. I've got screenshots that I've taken separate, but I'll just go frame by frame with all of you. So come along with the journey. If you enjoy the video, again, drop a like below. You guys can follow me. A lot of Season of Dawn stuff to come this week. Breaking everything down. We've got the podcast this weekend, and of course, the season launches on Tuesday. So let's get into this thing and hit play and watch it all together. I'm going to mute me for now, so enjoy the video. You've been busy, Guardian. You slew the undying mind, you changed the course of history. Now time is broken on Mercury, fractured by the Legion. They intend to write a new history, a new ending to the Red War. If you're willing to help, you'll need to walk the corridors of time. And you'll need my sundial to do it. I built it so that an ally of mine could cheat death. I failed to help him, and his death remains my greatest regret. They call me the greatest titan who ever lived. Caged animal! Triple down! Oh, your light is savage! What? What? Seven! Hold on! Bring the sky down upon them. Well, absolutely no question, Bungie knows how to make a damn good trailer. So, that's never really been in question. So now we're going to break it down, kind of frame by frame, drop in uh, some pauses in a couple spots, talk about a couple of things, go through what we can see in here. Now, I'm not going to claim to be a lore expert, so if you guys have thoughts, opinions, that stuff, and more knowledge than I do, drop it in the comments below. I always appreciate all that stuff from all of you, so thank you for dropping those knowledge bombs. So let's get started. You've been... First off, shout out to my co-host Cognito. He uh, was ultra excited to see Osiris come back. And honestly, for many, Osiris coming back, he has a chance to redeem what was potentially one of the worst expansions for Destiny 2. Curse of Osiris was Mercury, a couple missions, a planet without sparrows, which we actually saw. That gets changed, but I'll cover that again. Um, and overall, it was just kind of an empty campaign. One of the big talked about guys from Destiny 1 wanders off back into the portal. We don't get to do much with him. He's coming back in. People had suspicions. We were dealing with the Vex, and now we've got 
finish the Undying Mind and now Mercury and all these pieces. So, Osiris is back. Hopefully still kind of a bit of a badass like he was. So, let's see what he's got to the say. Guardian. So, we had gone through in the Vex Offensive and then in Final Assault. We killed the Undying Mind hundreds of thousands of times in all these different timelines that is out there. It made multiple copies. It was our job as Guardians to go in and kill all the copies of the Undying Mind. Now, as he states, when we kill all the copies and finally slay the last one... When you slew the Undying Mind, you changed the course of history. This moment is in... Um, the original campaign of Destiny 2. It is when the Traveler awoke for the first time after Gaul was trying to get his light from it, and then it was that moment when we previously had seen the way the light had traveled out into the universe, and I don't know if this is the way to retcon things, or they say, quote, on the old bulletin board that we saw, the white, um, what is it, dry erase board or whatever, it said, fix the timeline. That's what we're talking about. That is our goal in this one, and they still seem to be holding true to that. It was the, the board that had, like, year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven. All these years of Destiny of planning and major plot points that they wanted to see. We only saw fix the timeline for this coming season. This does look like what we're doing. So, the way it previously had been explained, what the light touched first tended to be the expansions. So, we had Mercury. The light touched that. We went to Mercury for Curse of Osiris. Then it was Mars. Mars was, uh, again, followed by that with Warmind. Then, what was after that? We had the Tangled Shore. That was the Reef, and the Dreaming City was connected to that. And then we had the Moon as well. So we've been going in the order that the light had touched the planets in the cinematic. It was shown that way intentionally. That was their plan. Now, if we're completely throwing the timeline up in the air, they honestly can go anywhere, which gives them uh, Destiny Bungie some flexibility. Depending on maybe if they wrote themselves in a corner. Some people may be like, oh, they're messing with time. We've been dealing with Vex since Destiny 1, who screw with time anyway. They time travel. They pass through all times. Time is not their thing. So we are at a point to where now a lot of things can happen. A lot of changes can happen, which is cool. But also, again, some people may be like, oh, time's a cheap thing. It's a video game. Just accept it and roll with it. But they can kind of do what they want to now if they have a certain plan. But they had to find some way to fix some things. This is some of the ways they can do that. Now time is broken on Mercury. So here's where we see Mercury for the first time. What it's going to look like in potentially in Season of Dawn. Now there's two options of what we're looking at right here. One is the six player activity called the Sundial. Uh, and that's what we actually use to go through and potentially it's going to be your six-player match-made seasonal activity, kind of the same way Vex Assault was. So I don't know if it is going to look like this all the time when you go to Mercury for the campaign and everything, like a World of Warcraft Cataclysm moment. Um, it could be. Like, if you just go to Mercury now, it could just look like this all the time. Because if you look in the back of the screen, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse on screen, but in the back, this is what you would consider the Vex past. If you go into the Infinite Forest, on some of the missions, you would go into the past for Mercury, and it looks really cool. You've got the open plains, the pink trees, a little bit of water, clean sky. It's cool. Then over here, on this kind of pie cut to the left over here, this is the point where you have the future of Mercury, which is when the Vex have completely taken over, kind of demolished everything. There are different generations of Vex, and we'll kind of go frame by frame when we see all of those as well. And then towards the front and somewhat on the right, we kind of have the current Vex that we've been dealing with pretty consistently throughout most of Destiny. And then in the middle, as he talks about, is his sundial. So this is the new thing. In the middle is previously where the public event was. So that is why I kind of have the question of, is the sundial going to turn and we're going to have different areas to work in in the sundial six-player activity? And you're going to be like, hey, clear out this side, clear out that side. Maybe you got to split up. Who knows? Or is this just what Mercury looks like right now? I honestly don't know. We won't know until we get in there. But again, potentially, if you load up... Mercury is actually small enough, honestly, that you could load up Mercury as a planet just to go explore. And you could also load it up as a six-player man-made activity and still probably manage to not kill the hard hardware of PlayStations and stuff that we're working with. PlayStations and Xbox, the base level. CPUs, RAMs, those graphics are a bit lower. I mean, I'm playing on PC. It's probably fine. But if you're loading a whole new instance of Mercury, it can only be so big. 
So they definitely have issues with loading and things like that. So I'll be curious to see how this works. Either way, it looks really cool that we have all three kind of time phases of Mercury in the same instance. So curious where that comes in. Fractured by the Legion. This first image right here, they mention where we kind of go, I don't know if we're traveling through time, fighting exactly what this is. He says it a couple points, but this like shattered glass area that we're basically into, kind of amazing looking. Um, shout out to the artist on this one. Shout out to Nine Hydras on Twitter. Um, got to meet him at Guardian Con. Really cool guy, and his artwork continues to be amazing. I don't know which part of all of Mercury he was in, but if he's involved in this one, can't wait to get my hands on it. I love it. He's done part of Shattered Throne. He's been part of the uh, Outbreak uh, Perfected Quest. So definitely had some very cool um, art worlds that he has built, and Mercury is one with three different phases of time where he can get really, really cool stuff. They intend to... So the previous, the black and white, that seems to be that shattered time area. This part right here, and as you can see, I can't tell if like across this little barrier is like the other version of time. This is the look when we kind of did one of our story missions previously is this dark kind of busted up version of Mercury. And this is the, the future Mercury that we've seen. So here we've got the tower where Brother Vance was. I don't even know if he's in there anymore. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Uh, but this thing's kind of been busted up. This seems to be kind of falling off to the side. So things are not quite the way they were as the Vex um, kind of tear things up in the future. Things haven't survived quite as well. So this is definitely a thing as well. Right, a new history. So these are the Cabal Scions he talked about. So there are a couple Scions. This one looks gross, but we all know Cabal without their helmets on are gross. That's why they're typically wearing them, but you can actually see one of the Scions actually here floating, doing his thing, but the Scions are trying to screw with time. And what they're trying to do is get a different ending to the Red War. The Red War is where Gaul came after us, tried to basically get his light from the Traveler and become at kind of the level of a Guardian like us, stripped our power away from us, and then we ended up actually getting it back. They're trying to change that. Obviously, our goal is going to be to stop that, not let it happen. But again, the big goal of what they're trying to do is we ended up killing the Undying Mind in 100,000, who knows how many, I'm just throwing a number out there, 100,000 different versions of the timeline. Well, by breaking that whole time loop thing that the Vex have, we've shattered Mercury's time because apparently the Vex and Mercury, they're kind of intertwined together. So now with all this craziness going on, potentially the Scions, who are also there, the Cabal are on the same planet, they want to go in and they kind of want to use the time that has been screwed with potentially and try and change time in other places is just a giant drastic hunch of my own. But in theory, you know, if you're in a place where there's different time phases, you can go to a different time phase and then go change something that happened in the past could be potentially a thing. So have to see how this one all plays out. But these guys look cool. This one's ugly as hell. A new ending to the Red War. That guy, on the other hand, looks awesome. So his gun that he's holding is actually oh. really cool. It looks kind of like almost a small Colossus rifle. But I love the antlers on his helm, the cool helmet. Of course, the little Scion cloaks in the back from Destiny 1. Those were some of the favorite Hunter cloaks before. Maybe we'll get those. Who knows? But i kind of not holding my breath. But all in all, the Scions look pretty cool, but they're pretty pissed and want to screw with us, which is not good. Here, we've got a glimpse at some of the new seasonal armor. This is the base seasonal, the ornaments. You'll see those a little later. Those look really cool. But these do look like the base seasonal armor. Um, pretty clean. I mean, Vex, Mercury weapons tend to be a um, little on the shiny side, a little chromatic. Um, not overly dramatic on designs and everything. Pretty smooth. But you do have a couple of these little uh, points down here as well coming from Vice. So... All in all, some probably cool weapons. Again, similar probably to the Vex Offensive where you've got multiple weapons that you can farm over and over for multiple rolls. This one looks potentially to be a scout-ish because it's got a decent scope and a long barrel. This might be... I'm probably terrible at this and you guys might correct everything I'm saying down below, so please do. Auto or Pulse. This actually looks like a new Breach Load Grenade Launcher, which is cool. Nice to have another one of those coming in the mix. What else we got? So again, here you've got the little symbol on the gun, but again, just a good clean image of this Titan armor. The base armor's okay. The seasonal ornaments are the ones that you're definitely going to want. If you're willing to help. So I'm sure if there's an emote with those little, like, turning little puzzle bricks that um, Osiris uses, a lot of people are going to get it. Cognito, if you see this thing, I know you're going to get that emote at some point, for sure. No question. You'll 
So here you are kind of going through different phases in time. Here's the breech load grenade launcher again on his back. Very, very obvious. This is probably a very new gun that we're going to get. Don't know how, what it's going to be involved in, but still cool. We get a new breach one. By breach, I mean like fighting lion, mountaintop. It's one shot and you got to reload it. It's not the drum. Need to walk the corridors of time. The corridors of time. So this is what I'm talking about. You still potentially have in the background this kind of triangular entrance to the infinite forest. This big circle potentially is in the middle of the Mercury map. So you might still be in the same space. But things have just, com like, time literally does look like it's broken out here. It's just chromatic, like, monochrome, black and white and gray. No other colors in here. Really not a lot going on. We're kind of in, like, a parallel situation. I'm not sure parallel universe is the right word, but definitely a weird version of time in this instance because it's all black and white. Now, this is the sundial. So, as you can see, back over here, you can still see the trees that are actually live. So, this is going to be that past vex. And then depending on as, as the sundial, this giant thing actually spins. I don't know if this is just the thing in the middle. We've got to like pass through and clear out different sides. And it's the only way to get to the other one is go through the middle. I'm not sure. But again, this is where the public event is at. If we can't get here during the normal run, this will only be in the six person activity. But I'm kind of hoping it's just they've completely blown up the planet and just messed with it like World of Warcraft cat Cataclysm. Kind of hoping. And you'll need my son kind of a cool overhead shot you can see just different areas of it you can see over on the left over here we've got the past because it's still got the plains and kind of the orange grass on the ground this one definitely looks a lot more barren down here looks pretty beat up so definitely seem to be divided into a couple sections for sure Nile to do it i built it so that an ally of mine could cheat death i failed to help him so the ally he's talking about is Saint-14. One of the coolest titans. There is a helm truly named after him. He is a sentinel titan. Um, and he's said to be potentially one of the biggest and coolest and best. So there was the quest we went through previously. Uh, we got to see his corpse kind of floating in its own place out here. Things potentially are changing with what he's messing with. And his death remains my greatest regret. Doesn't seem like he died. This also looks very much like the perfect paradox, which is fitting. Um, it was a shotgun before. Looks very much Titan-like. And here you can see XIV, which is 14. Saint 14. They call me the greatest Titan who ever lived. So here I'm going to break it down frame by frame just so you guys can see it. You're going to see past... So here you have the past. These are like precursor Vex. They're the old Chrome guys. And if you want to know if it's the same enemy, look at the hand down here. It has very long um, fingers. Like most human fingers will be stopping at this first digit. It's got two more long ones. So very big hands that it's got there. But you go frame by frame. Now we're on the Vex that we're used to. Standard normal Vex with their guns, the weapons, things like that. Got your standard eye right here. Pretty standard Vex. And then as he gets to go right here, this is the future. This is that kind of dark, purple hueish kind of busted up future Vex. I forget what these are even called. It's been a little while since I've done this. Strange Eye, again, hand is still the same. Gun has kind of evolved in color more than anything. Head has changed noticeably. The eye, of course, is different as well. And then, this is the new one. This is your black and whites. So this is your monochromatic. This is the busted time area. Still a goblin potentially, even though it looks more like a hobgoblin with kind of the ear shape area up top. But this hand looks identical. And maybe this is a hobgoblin because it actually looks like it's got a tail. But it maybe because it doesn't have a tail there. And then that one actually does. So this truly may be a hobgoblin. Just potentially switching enemies in here for what they could do. But overall, you can tell there's four different variations of Vex that we're going to be facing. We're still moving forward with Vex that we're dealing with, but Cabal are going to be in here as well. Time travel going on. Vex still screwing with everything. A lot of stuff going on. So, new finisher. Kind of the Hayukin uppercut from uh, Street Fighter. I only have one issue with this, and this is just a nitpicking because I actually teach kick kickboxing. I'm not going to claim to ever be, like, fight-worthy. I just do fitness kickboxing. But really, if you look at his hand, when he punches up, 
You can still see the top of his forearm. If you're actually going to throw an uppercut to the chin, you would still want to hit with your knuckles on the top of your hand, not all the way under, like, punching with the front of your hand. So you would want to actually turn his palm in and actually have his forearm facing out. So the uppercut animation, love you guys for always doing this type of stuff. Just turn the hand in and it'd be great. Sorry, little nitpick there for me, but that's just a little thing. Saint-14, kind of a beast. Uh, he's going to be pretty cool. Can't wait to see what story comes with that. So we have the Sundial, the new six-player activity. I think they're just honestly going to reuse the space on Mercury for this one. But six players on Mercury working together to fight all around. Still pretty cool looking. Um, you'll see the Warlock's new three firebolt thing. I'm sure the Hydra had low health. It's probably not that powerful, but it does kill the Hydra. So that one right there, you see the three little fireballs. So you can see this still looks like Mercury. So back here you've got the trees. Big sundial in the middle. This is the stairs we're used to. This is where we would kind of launch back and forth to the previous public event platforms. So we're still going to work around this ring. We're still going to be working out here. You've got Vex. You've got Cabal potentially maybe on another side. But the three little fireballs, you can see that for the first time from the Warlock. And the sundial is actually quite huge. That thing in the middle is large. Now we get our first glimpse here at one of our new champions. This is a giant colossus for Cabal. Now, it is a Red Legion, so this is where they're saying the Legion, or the Red Legion, is potentially trying to change the timeline to save Gaul, bring him back, whatever they're trying to do. But also you can see a Colossus that is, I don't know what type of champion he's going to be. Currently we have three. Barrier, Overload, Overload, and Unstoppable. I don't know which type he would be. Barrier seems kind of drastic because barriers are already hard enough to kill. If you can't kill him, getting his health back would be rough. Um... Overload might be a thing, but normally the Colossus are pretty static. They don't charge you. And the Overload seem to run at you. And the Unstoppable also seem to run at you, but they're typically a little more melee based. But I don't picture them being Barrier. I am curious which um, type they are. And I'm also curious when it comes to the Season Pass artifact, or Seasonal Artifact, what weapons we're going to be using against these champions. Because I have a feeling we're not going to be using submachine guns, autos, and hand cannons again. They're probably going to change all that stuff up. Just don't know what that is, potentially, until the stream tomorrow. So, a couple new finishers here. Fight. So, you've got a kind of a Guile. Apparently, they're just going Street Fighter on this one, because we've got Hayuken and a Guile's flip kick here. And then this one is a nice throw to Saint-14, because this is part of the seasonal pass. Um, it's basically like the Roman helmet with all the fuzzy stuff on top. I don't even know what the right word of that, what that stuff is called, but you'll see him kind of run his hand back through his hair, or what he would do is run his hand through his helmet, and then he's going to headbutt this guy, which is just sick. Like a caged animal! I am. New exotic quests. One does come with the season pass. I'll cover that in a separate video when we're actually talking about the page of all the information. But the exotic quest itself, I'm not sure which one it's going to be for, but we will see. Still, this is more of that time, broken area, monochrome... Weird Vex tree, but also weird triangular. A whole bunch of craziness going on. Still very curious what we get to do in here. We have Sparrows on Mercury. This is a huge one. Can I get a woot woot for everybody in chat? I know I'm actually in Twitch, but uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I cannot believe it's taken this long, but we're finally going to drive Sparrows on Mercury. Taking a long time. I don't know why this Sparrow looks like it has a skull on it. Apparently it passed through Texas a little while ago. But either way, Longhorn Sparrow or the Ram, one of those... And then I can't quite tell what's going on there. But Sparrows on Mercury finally happened. This is our amazing design. Shout out to the art team, whoever designed this thing. This thing is beautiful. This is the new scout rifle. It's called Symmetry. Uh, we know because they mentioned it on the webpage. And this is the one that you get with the season pass. Kind of the same way Ariana's Vow came at level 1 or 35 on the free pass. This is your freebie that comes with um, the season pass. Probably also going to have the very long catalyst to grind for as well. So one of those things that's going to take some time to work through. It looks cool though. I honestly can't quite figure out what it is. And let me play it again so you guys can see it and I'll explain why. So here. Okay, here's a couple things. You've got Fallen on Mercury. And we know we've seen Cabal. We know we've seen Vex. Fallen have never been on Mercury, so this is a first. Maybe the sundial can get certain things. 
In the sight of this weapon, you've got the XIV for 14. It seems like the symbol for the Season of Dawn is it going to be this eagle, which is pretty cool, or eagle, or bird, or phoenix, whatever it's going to be, I'm not entirely sure. But you'll see if you go frame by frame, you don't get to see it long. That's why I'm going to go frame. There's the giant flash. I'm sorry, that's a really bright light. There's only so much I can do. But as you can see right here underneath the scope, the eagle that was below it is actually moving, and it's going to show the little, like, sun off to the side. You only get to see it for about three frames. That's why I'm doing this ultra slow. And then those kind of basically flare out, and then we switch. So just a little tease. I'm not entirely sure what all that does on the gun. What it means, if anything, is it has a reference to the charge of the weapon or an ability or anything of that nature. We'll just have to see. PvP Elimination Mode, Rusted Lands Returns. This is one of the fan favorites. I actually kind of enjoy this map, too. It's a cool balance. You can both have some sniping lanes and have some close-up runs. And it's a good balanced map. I always thought it was kind of a fun one, so I'm glad to see it coming back. Also, PvP Elimination Mode um, is also returning. They kind of have that one a little smaller. They've had Elimination in Crucible Labs for testing. But at this point, they've got it up um, potentially going to be on the Director. I don't know if this is also going to be a way to earn glory as well outside of survival. Not sure. Just have to see. But elimination is coming back. So we'll just have to see what details we get. I think tomorrow the big one is, or today by the time you're watching this, the big stream that comes tomorrow is rumored potentially to have some big news drops. So we will see what happens with that. So here's where you get to see the scout rifle in action. It switches modes towards the end of this. I'm just going to let it play. And it almost goes from a scout rifle to a fusion rifle because these people dematerialize the way they do when they're hit with fusion bolts. So your guess is as good as mine. Let me know in the comments below what you think this weapon actually is going to be. So let's get started. Triple down. Why, your light is savage. Well, that's the scout. Up to this point, feels like a scout. is like three or four... It's a quick shooting one, so it's kind of going to be like a Black Scorpion, faster firing, Randy's throwing knife, about that speed. But then when he, like, smacks the bottom, kind of the way you reload the Izanagis to give it that, like, ultra single big shot, the gun changes quite a bit. I say gorgeous gun. What? What? It's literally hip firing, fusion rifle, one, two, three, killing these three. So, I don't know what this thing gets to do if you get enough headshots with it or something, but... Chat was saying maybe it's like enough headshots it turns into a fusion rifle and you get a couple fusion rifle shots. It's got potential to be a beast, like if there's a way to do that. And it's just gorgeous, so we'll see. Also here we get a couple different emotes. So you've got the little, um, basically grocery store horse ride, but it's the little mini-me sparrow. You've got the Ronin sword, like pull across the arm, like cleaning on kind of the sheath of the... The gauntlet right there. And then here you've got the football spike. You can kind of see as it goes through. Football spike's coming over. Sword is getting cleaned off on the arm. And this one's just riding back and forth as he puts the dollar in for it to, you know, put another one in so the horse will rock type thing. Um. Bring the sky down upon them. And that is basically it, everybody. So... That is just a run through of the trailer, all the breakdowns I could find, little tidbits I've got. The website has more information, so I'm going to do a separate video on this one because this one is already getting long as it is. So stay tuned. If you haven't subbed to the channel, hit the sub button. Uh, the next video will be coming out as quick as I can get it done. If not tonight, when I get home in the morning, that's the next thing before the stream happens. And then I will break down the stream, every little detail I can find in there as well. So thank you guys for the support lately. The climb continues to 50k. You guys are awesome. Um, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment. If you have thoughts, opinions, theories, anything, throw that below. I'd love to get everybody speculating. Somebody's got to be right. So throw something down there in the comments. Let me know what you guys are excited about, what you guys think could happen, where you think the lore and stuff and story will go. So let me know. Other than that, you guys can find me on Twitch and Twitter, where I'll probably be going over more stuff, doing some comp stream, finishing up my season of Undying Grind, which I've got a lot of stuff to do. So I'll probably be on Twitch a lot this weekend. So... Find me there. It's Ibantis everywhere. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Thank you guys for the support. And have an awesome one. Can't wait to see what comes tomorrow. So enjoy your morning. Stream is coming probably by the time you're watching this. So I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Adios.